Hi, I'm B from Nature Mechanics, and in today's video, we're going to be making a Rose of the Beast diorama made out of foam and dollar store foliage. So, Rise of the Beasts is around a month or so away, depending on which country you live in. So, the hype is real. I've already expressed my distaste for the Bayverse in the Bumblebee review, but as people pointed out, Rise of the Beasts isn't Bayverse, so I have hope. Now, if you watched my collection tour video I made a few days ago, I show off that I collect a lot of Transformers, and I like to make dioramas for them. And not all the shelves have dioramas, so I want to fix that, and even though I don't have many Rise of the Beast figures, I do have plenty of Beast Wars figures. So I figured, why not I make a Rise of the Beast diorama that can serve as being the Beast Wars diorama as well. To kick things off, we need to make sure that it's actually going to fit. Now, obviously, I tried to measure the shelf, but I can never get things quite right. So I find to measure it, cut it, and then try and do a test fit. And if it doesn't work, cut it more, carry on till eventually it's about right. I'm just using cereal box cardboard because it's really thin. Now, for most of this project, we're going to be using floor mat foam. I have a ton of this left over from when I did my foam Iron Man helmet, and I thought I might as well use it, right? So now that we get that foam, we can make a start on actually building the diorama. Now, I want this to be a vaguely sort of grassy, foliagey place, but also quite rocky. So we're going to make a base backdrop wall. I'm not worrying about doing walls for both sides, as if you do walls on the sides of the shelf, tends to look more like a sealed unit, like a room. Whereas if you leave the shelf sides blank, it kind of implies that it's meant to go on further than you can see. Now, I literally just cut a square of foam, but to make it more interesting, I'm gonna use some scrunched up tin foil and essentially just punch the foam in the hopes of giving it some imprint texture. Now this foam doesn't tend to accept the marks very strongly, it's very subtle, but it's still definitely worth it. It makes it look more slightly rocky than it does just looking like a sheet of foam. So now that we have a base backdrop, let's start on the floor. Now for half the floor, we're just gonna use a square of some craft store grass that I found. I know, I'm cheating, I'm using pre-made grass instead of getting the flocking and the static applicator. I don't have that, sorry. Now for the interesting and fun part, we're gonna get to make the rest of the floor out of these little sort of rocky pebbles, make it look almost like a cave or a mountain. To do that, I'm just cutting off rough chunks of the foam in vague pebbly stony shapes, and then cutting them with the scissors to be on a slight bevel, very rough, and then we stamp those with the tin foil as well, making it just have a really cool rocky texture. And of course, the harder you stamp, the stronger the imprint, so doing very degrees of the strength means you get more texture. This is something that's very key about this build. The actual premise is really simple. Grass rocks. But if we can make it look visually interesting with a texture of noise, so slight variances and subtle colors and stuff long term, giving it a physical noise as well means we'll have something to paint that will actually look interesting. If we just left it flat, it would look flat. If we're giving it varying bumps and stuff, it just looks a lot cooler. And now you have discovered 90% of this project. That's right, for two days, I cut tiny little pebbles, sometimes big pebbles, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. Then I would rough them up again, make sure that they had the little bevels and scissor cuts, and then hot glue it to the base. And eventually, we managed to coat the entire floor in vague rock pebbles. Once the floor is done, we get to do the wall again. Now, I know I've done a base wall, but that's kind of boring. We don't want it to just be flat. Again, we want variance in texture and stuff to paint. So this time, instead of cutting round pebbles, I cut bigger, flatter sheets. Because this is meant to be the side of a cave, it's going to have bits that are sort of built up and sort of scaffolding around. We just want it to look as natural as we can, and I highly recommend using plenty of reference material. I was predominantly using the Rise of the Beast trailer, obviously, but if you want to make your terrain more unique, you can literally just go into nature, take a picture, try and copy it. If you want something to look realistic, take something that's real. I also made sure to add little bits of trees and stuff like that, just to give it a little bit more interest, and then... It's time to start painting. Now, I'm quite happy with how most of the doll store foliage looks. I'm still gonna tweak some of the greens later on, but for now, let's focus on the rocks. Now the rocks do not look like rocks. They are yellow and they are blue. So let us give them a black base coat. Even though we're not gonna have black rocks, if we have a base coat, any bits that we miss will look like shading and it will be a good way to add a nice depth and layering effect with other colors later on. This was really fiddly and really time consuming. 
because as you can imagine, me not planning it out very well meant that there was lots of little gaps in between each of the stones that my paintbrush just couldn't quite reach. So it was just lots of hours of trying my best. Eventually though, I managed to coat all of it in black and it was time to actually start doing the interesting part of the painting, which is the dry brushing. You see me do lots of different kinds of weathering techniques before, right? I've done sponging, I've done dry brushing, I've done a mixture of both. For this, we don't want any sponging. Sponging gives it splotchy texture, which is good for metal. But for rocks, we want to only use dry brushing because it makes it look like it's had stuff grazed over it, like it's been scuffed, like it's, you know, fallen off a cliffside, right? To do this, I'm just gonna dry brush layers of gray and then eventually work my way up into brighter shades of gray until we are literally at white. This takes a while. Dry brushing is where you get rid of most of the paint, right? So you gotta just dry brush it all, let it dry and go again. I'm not being too careful about masking the grass as I'm probably gonna paint more of that later on. So for now, I'm just using the big brush, just lathering it all over and trying my best to brighten it up as quick as I can. Eventually, I got it to a stage where it was as bright as I wanted and I started to do highlights of green. This is just to give it slight mossy tinge, you know, slight jungly grassy look. If we just lift it stale gray, that'd be kind of boring. So any other colors we can get like green is gonna be so much better. Now for the grass, to be honest, I was really happy with how the dull still grass came already. So I literally just did the bits that I accidentally painted gray and a couple little splotches here or there, a bit around the trees to give it shading. But other than that, it was basically fine. It's all well and good having grass and trees, but we need vines and leaves. And these are from the hobby store, not the doll store. Once I'd added the vines, I was about ready to call it quits and say it was done. Except it then got pointed out to me that it kind of need moss, don't I? It need the rocks and the moss and the foliage. And that was a brilliant idea. So I had some of this fake craft moss that I could just stick in all the gaps and hot glue in place. And then I gave everything a little bit of paint. I added some yellows to the trees, added some darker greens to the moss, and also a tiny bit of a black wash and some dark green to the leaves. Just because it's factory made, which means it's always pristine printed colors. But after a few days of cutting, gluing, and painting, we're ready to show off my Rise of the Beasts diorama. Now that is easily the best diorama I have made to date. <laughs> I love the way the black paint really shaded in between each individual rocks. The slight tinge of green dry brushing and the moss really helps all bring it together. Plus, my figures look awesome on it now. Hang on, let me go, let me just, hang on. There we go. Doesn't that look so much better than an empty white square? Yeah, I'm happy with that. And I hope you are too. I hate having to say this, but if you enjoyed the video, please subscribe. We're getting quite a lot of new people coming in lately and it's a joy to see. So please, if you like it, 
do. Also, make sure to come back next weekend as we get another Cybertronian Saturday. Last time I did a review on something that was double my age, now we got something that came out this year. Otherwise, I hope you have a lovely rest of your day, and I'll catch you next time. Farewell!